So welcome to this webinar on the EBI Search RESTful API. This is part of a series of webinars on the programmatic access to Amble EBI data resources and services. In summary, we will go through an introduction to the EBI Search service. We will provide an overview on the RESTful API and we will see a few practical examples on how to use it and how to take advantages of the search results available. Finally, some help and support resources will be provided to you. So, an introduction to EBI search. Who are the people behind it? I am Silvano Squizzato and I am a member of the web production team at Amble EBI. The web production team, amongst other things, is responsible for the web infrastructure and deployment together with the job dispatcher and the EBI search itself. Below, you can see the people directly involved in the development and support of EBI search. Starting from the left, Rodrigo Lopez, our team leader, Yumi, Nicola, Tamer and myself. What is EBI search in short? It is a scalable, fast search, indexing and retrieval system. It enables users to have a powerful data navigation across all the biological data hosted at Amble EBI. The EBI search can be used in two different ways through a web interface, this www.ebi dot ac dot uk slash ebi search or through the restful api programmatically if you have uh, you know more interest in knowing more details uh, see more statistics and read about features in detail you can have a look to the publication associated to the ebi search and here you have all the references available why the RESTful API is so important? Because it allows users to search for data and to use the results as input to other bioinformatics tools. In that way, you know, easily can be built some data workflows. The EBI Search RESTful API also makes search capabilities available in third party portals. And so essentially, EBI Search acts as a search as a service. In a picture, we can see what EBI search does. There is a constant flow of data coming into the system, ranging from proteins, models, biostructures, genes, literature, and also diseases, which come in different formats, flat files, XML, or JSON streams. They are regularly indexed and the system is based on the Apache Lucene technology and the indexes and data is made available through the RESTful API to different portals and different communities of users. For example, on the right side, you can see RNA Central, Omics DI Discovery Index. The EBI Search web interface itself is a client of the RESTful API. And also Interpro is another example. I will now provide an overview about the DBI Search RESTful API. So where we can find it? Essentially, there is a dedicated Swagger page to it. Swagger is a typical broadly used framework to document RESTful web services. And it is not only a source of documentation for the API, but it is also an interactive interface to test the API methods. The Wardle associated to EBI search is available at this URL. And this represents the binding contract if you want to build any web service client related to this interface in different languages. The base URL for all the RESTful API methods is the following www.ebi.ac.uk slash EBI search slash WS slash REST. 
So if you land on the Swagger page of the EBI Search RESTful API, you can see a collection of methods available, grouped by type of functionality. So you have some search methods which allow user to search across all the data available in the EBI search or on specific data domains. Data domains means databases, specific resources, resources is indexed in the EBI search. You can also retrieve information from those databases. You can have a look to frequent top terms. You can benefit of autocomplete functionality and also navigate through the network of cross-references available. We will see only examples related to a couple of methods, but we will invite you to explore more on this page and to ask for questions or for more details in through the support channels. So in the Swagger interface, you will see for every method a short summary, the URL to call to invoke the service, a list of parameters with allowed values, and also HTTP headers that can be set. You will see the response content type available and the response messages or errors that can be returned once you call each method. In the same page, there is a section dedicated to sample web service clients, which can be used as a reference if you want to have a look on how to use the interface through languages like Python, Perl, or Java. This is how the Swagger interface looks like for a specific domain search method. There is a short summary, a URL to call, and various boxes that can be filled with relevant information by the user. Once you press the send button, you will actually trigger the request to the server and you can see the results on below basically. So we will have a look to a few examples now. The first example is how to get some metadata information from a domain. So suppose that you know that there is a, a data domain, a database called OMIM indexed in the BI search. OMIM is a database about human diseases and also genetic disorders. Suppose that we want to get all the metadata available for that domain in the EBI search system. So you selected the domain search method slash WS slash REST slash domain and with domain set to OMIM in this case. For this example, there are no other parameters to set. So this is what the interface will look like. As you can see, OMIM is the domain to set. And if you press send, you will see the result. The response contains a summary about the data domain, a list of fields explaining which are searchable, retrievable, and sortable. Also a list of cross-references and facets will be available. Facets are very important during the search because they are properties of the data that is searched and they allow the users to select some specific filters to narrow down the results if required. As a rule of thumb, for each of the API available on the uh, EBI Search RESTful API, you can see the curl URL that you can cut and paste on your shell to try the command line, or you can cut and paste the request URL on a browser to see directly the results on your web page. I won't go through the details of the response returned through the RESTful API. I will invite you to have a look to the web interface, which can basically represent and show the same content, but in a more friendly visual way. So for example, if you click on the web interface, this URL, you will see 
the metadata related to the OMIM database that we are interested in. So you will see the number of entries available, when it has been indexed, and below there is a table, for example, with all the fields that you can query, including ID, surely, and title that will be used in a later example. So the second example is about actually searching and retrieving something from the database that we have just explored. So the goal in this case is to search and retrieve a nomim identifier associated to a specific disease. In this case, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 1. Again, you select the domain search method, specifying as domain OMIM, and then we can fill the specific parameters required. The query will be amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 1, and the field to retrieve are a list of comma-separated field names, in this case, ID and title. The response is application slash JSON. So when you land in the main page, you can fill all the bits as we have uh, seen, and you will see the resulting URL that you can actually click when you trigger the send request. The response available in the Swagger page includes what we were looking for. This OMIM ID 105400. You can see that we have found 170 results, but the first one is the one matching our criteria because it provides the required ID and the title is actually amyotrophic lateral sclerosis one. In addition to the response, you can also use the HTTP headers available through the EPI. These headers, for example, if you have a look to this one, the EBI search total results represent the number of results. And this can help users uh, consuming the API before processing the response and taking decision as soon as possible. The third example is uh, related again to search on a domain and show some facets. The goal in this case is to get a list of entries in Uniprot essentially proteins, which have a nomim cross-reference to the disease that we have just mentioned, the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 1. Suppose that we know that in Uniprot the cross-reference to OMIM is called MIM, so MIM. MIM is, in this case, with identifier 105400. Often in Uniprot, in data, annotations to OMIM identifiers are useful because it's a way to mark which data is related to a specific disease. That is why we are searching using the domain search method in Uniprot as domain. We specify a query which is MIM colon, the identifier just uh, uh, cited, and this is a specific case of query syntax. If you want to know more how to use the query syntax specific to the EBI search, I will invite you to have a look to the main documentation available. As a facet, in this case, we can just extract uh, a field called the chromosome. So we will see which chromosomes are related to the search result that we are interested in. The facet count is just the number of values, the maximum number of values uh, that we are trying to get uh, from each facet. And the format in this case is JSON. This is, again, the familiar Swagger page where we can fill all the required information. And you can see the resulting method with the query parameters, the facet fields set to chromosome, and the facet counts 10 and the format set to JSON. The response, as you expect, will provide the search result matching the, the search criteria. So in this case, we can see that there are four matches. The hit count is not is four. That means there are four proteins with a nomim identifier 
to the disease that we are focused on. You can also see the values associated to the facet chromosome. In this case, you can see the first one, which is 21, but there are also 22, 1, and 2. The example 3 can also be visualized, as we mentioned earlier, on the web interface. It is, again, an easier way to have at glance a summary of the data available, the numbers involved, and this can have uh, driving the use of the RESTful API. As you can see, the facet on the web interface are just uh, some uh, filters available on the left side of the web page. If you are interested to use the output of this request in a different format, you can specify, for example, as a format parameter ID list. Having a list of IDs can be useful because you can actually use directly the uh, output as input to another bioinformatic tools for sequence similarity search or for multiple sequence alignment. So suppose that this is the curl command line with the format set to ID list, you will have as an output just uh, a short list of four proteins that can be used. Finally, the fourth example is about getting cross-references, but the goal is exactly the same as the one set in example three. It is about getting Uniprot entries with a cross-reference to OMIM, to a specific OMIM ID, 105400. The goal is the same, and I would just like to highlight that you can achieve the same results using different and calling, invoking different methods of the API according to the uh, performance uh, required or some constraints that you might have in your use case. The cross-reference search method is slightly different, but the process is exactly the same. You set the domain to OMIM, the entry IDs as uh, a list of comma separate IDs that you are interested, the target domain ID is Uniprot. In this case, you can see the facets that you want to get. And once you fill all the information in the Swagger page and you send and you click the send button, you will see the results, which again are exactly the same as before. We will have four, four proteins matching the criteria and the chromosome uh, facet identical as before. So now I will provide all the references for the documentation and support resources that you might be interested. So in addition to the Saga page, there is a, a main search documentation page for the EBI search. But in particular, there is a, a support form. This is the official channel where you can convey all your feedback, describe your use case, ask for questions or more details, or just report any issues that you might have. So we will actually invite you to use this channel if you want to have uh, an efficient way to communicate with us. As you have seen, there are people there dedicated to support and to provide all the possible information available. If you are interested to know more about web services at Amble EBI, there is a dedicated page to that. And of course, we will invite you to have a look to previous webinars, in particular because there might be related resources that can be used in combination. Finally, if you go to www.ebi.ac.uk, slash training slash webinars, you can see the upcoming webinars and we will invite you to provide feedback at the end of this session. With this in mind, I will thank you for your attention.